There's a beautiful garden maze on Fiona's land. She teleported Betty to the center of the maze and gave her this map. Betty must find a black cat. Otherwise, she's gonna stay in this trap forever. Can you help Betty out? Here's the way. Betty wanted to run back to the castle as soon as possible. Suddenly, a creepy zombie started chasing her. It looked hungry. Betty was running away and noticed three paths. The first path was covered by poisonous acid. The second path by bugs and maggots. And the third path by thorn bushes. Which way should Betty choose? Betty should choose the second path. Bugs and maggots are gross, but they're harmless. Fiona asked Betty to serve dinner for a witch party in her castle. Can you count how many witches have arrived at this event? There are 13 witches in this picture. This one is not a witch, it's a garden scarecrow. Betty needed to go to the store to buy some ingredients for dinner. She began to write them down. Milk, lemon juice, eggs, butter, oranges, baking soda, cashews, and vinegar. What was Betty making? Have you guessed? Betty was making a shopping list. Betty served the witches the first meal. Can you guess what exactly? The correct answer is onion rings. Here's a second serving. Can you guess it? It's blueberry. What about this dish? What do you say? It's popcorn. Here's the next one. Did you get it right? It's a strawberry milkshake. Fiona asked Betty to bring dried flowers to cook a love potion. Fiona stores all ingredients in her warehouse, but as soon as Betty entered the warehouse, the door locked behind her back. Betty searched this area and found some old furniture and an antique mirror. Suddenly, she noticed three doors, but there was a dangerous monster behind each door. The first monster can turn any living being into stone. The second one is very angry and strong. And the third monster has venomous teeth. Can you help Betty choose the right door? <laughs> Betty should open the first door and show the mirror to the monster so that it would turn into stone. Then she can escape through the first door. Betty took her phone and ran into the forest. It was pretty dark and scary. Betty stepped on a wasp nest. Wasps were everywhere. What should Betty do? Wave her arms to scare the wasps? Run away as fast as she can? Or walk away slowly? What do you think? The safest choice is to walk slowly. Waving hands and running is too dangerous. The wasps will get angry and sting her. Betty has returned to the party, but when she saw the crowd of witches by the fire, she got scared and ran away. Why? This lady by the fire is a ghost. See, she doesn't have any feet and levitates. Betty decided to hide in the castle. She wanted to call the police, but she couldn't find her phone. Betty questioned three witches. Georgina said, Who dare you? 
I use telepathy. Phones and gadgets are for losers, Lillian said. I was outdoors singing with other witches. I didn't see or hear anything weird. And Nina said, I don't need to steal, honey. I can manifest any amount of money anytime. Who's lying? Georgina, take a look at her ears. She's wearing earphones, but she said she didn't use any gadgets. Fiona got very angry when she found out that Betty had interrogated her dearest friends. Betty apologized. Fiona said, Okay, I'll let you stay, but you must answer three questions. Here's the first one. I've been here for a million years, but I'm never more than a month old. What am I? Have you guessed it? The correct answer is the moon. Here's Fiona's second question. I build castles and I tear down mountains. I make some people blind, but I help others see. What am I? The correct answer is sand. And the third question is, I can be long or I can be short. I can be bought or I can be grown. I can be painted or I can be bare. I can be round or I can be square. What am I? And the answer is fingernails. The party was still on. Fiona went upstairs to change her dress. In five minutes, Betty heard a scream from Fiona's bedroom and found her unconscious on the floor. Betty asked one question to four suspects. What have you been doing for the last five minutes? Jenny was roasting marshmallows by the fire. Gemma said, I've spent the last 30 minutes in the pool. Sarah said, My frog Fluffy ran away to the garden. I've been looking everywhere. But unfortunately, I couldn't find it. And Nancy was flying on her broom around the house and filming the party on her phone. Who's lying? Sarah. Her frog is sitting in her pocket. Suddenly, someone turned the lights off. Betty woke up in jail. She found this clue on the floor. It said... Explain this code and you'll be free. Can you help Betty? Here's the answer. Betty was running through Fiona's basement and noticed two more prisoners. She figured out that one of them was planning to escape. Can you guess who? The first prisoner. There's a hole behind the toilet that he started digging. Abby invited her best friend Nina to go skating in the park. Soon, they got really hungry and decided to buy some burgers. They chose similar toppings and added lots of sauces. Ten minutes later, Nina got very sick. Abby had to call 911. Paramedics took the girl to a hospital and diagnosed severe poisoning. Can you tell which sauce was poisoned? This one, Abby didn't use any garlic sauce. When Nina got better, Abby took her for a walk. They spotted the spookiest house in the neighborhood and decided to check it. <laughs> that was a big mistake. When they got inside, the door behind them suddenly disappeared. Now they have three ways out. There's a zombie behind the first door. A creepy vampire is waiting behind the second door. And there's an angry g -g -g ghost behind the third door. Which way is the safest? They should choose the third door. Ghosts may be spooky, but they can't cause any real harm. 
Okay, well, maybe you might get slimed, but... Nina and Abby found themselves in the next room. The door leading outside was open, and they ran toward it. But an old witch popped out of nowhere and yelled, <laughs> Not so fast! You've got to solve my riddle first! Why are these words in such an order? Nina and Abby failed to crack this riddle. What about you? Here's the correct answer. The words rhyme with 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. That's why they're in this order. The witch teleported Nina and Abby to her basement. But the girls didn't give up and found three ways out again. The room behind the first door was filled with toxic gas. It was extremely harmful to their lungs and skin. There was a 300-pound weight above the second door. It'll crush anyone or anything that steps inside. And a hungry tiger was waiting behind the third door. Abby and Nina hesitated for a while and made the right choice. Which door did they choose? Nina took off her boot and threw it on the floor in the second room. The weight crushed the boot, and the girls ran into the room and closed the door. After that, they escaped through the window. Unfortunately, they got lost in a magical forest. It was cold since it was winter. After wandering around for a while, they saw three roads. All of them seemed dangerous. If they picked the road leading to the left, they'd have to go past some hungry wolves. And if they went straight ahead, they'd have to go through a village where werewolves lived. And the third path went over a lake covered with thin ice that could crack at any moment. Which way should they choose? They should follow the second path. Look at the sky. It's a new moon. And werewolves are only dangerous during a full moon. Nina and Abby got home safely. Oh, but no. someone had burgled their apartment while they were absent. They called the police, and they questioned three neighbors. Jeff said, I was away all weekend, fishing with my friends. Holly said, I didn't leave my home. I was painting the walls in my apartment all weekend. I love bright colors, you know. And Lucy said that she'd been singing karaoke with her friends and hadn't heard anything suspicious. Who's lying? Holly. The walls in her apartment are mostly white, but she said that she'd painted them in some bright colors. Nina got a job in a bookstore. On her first day at work, she found a vintage watch on the floor. Three people came over to claim it. Kevin said that he'd bought this watch when he got his first salary many years ago. Violet said that she'd inherited the watch from her grandfather. And Dylan said, This watch is priceless. My wife gave it to me for our fifth anniversary. Can you tell who owns this watch? It's Violet. She has the narrowest wrist. That's why the girl made an extra hole. Otherwise, the watch would slip off her hand. Abby went on a date with Jerry. He invited her over. But as soon as Abby got inside his apartment, Jerry turned into an evil wizard. He decided to make fun of her and said, I'll give you a chance to get free. Just make me breakfast tomorrow. If it's good enough, I'll let you go. And if it's bad, you'll stay here forever. <laughs> the next morning, Abby came to the kitchen and began cooking. When she turned away from the stove, Jerry added a whole box of salt to the pot. But when Abby served breakfast, Jerry understood that he'd have to let Abby go. What did she cook? She cooked boiled eggs. Abby got a new job. She had to assist a railroad supervisor. One day, they faced a huge problem. A faster train was approaching a slower one. According to the schedule, the slower train had to let the faster train go first. Abby offered to use an auxiliary railway line, but it was too short for the slower train. Abby didn't know what to do, but finally, she found the solution. What did she realize? The 
The faster train should use the auxiliary railway line. Now the slower train can move back. When the main railway line is free, the faster train can go first. Abby got a note which said that a vampire family had moved into one of the houses in the neighborhood. Abby wanted to find evidence that vampires didn't exist. She found the street she needed. There were three houses there. Which house looks suspicious? Look at the footprints. They're pretty weird. They lead to and from houses A and C. It means people must come and leave these houses. As for house B, the footprints only lead inside. So this must be the vampire's house. Jewelry store manager started to notice that every month a pair of earrings went missing. The suspicion fell on the cashier. The first time it happened, she was forgiven. The second time, the sum was withdrawn from her salary. The third time, the manager fired her. But the theft happened for a fourth time. When it occurred once again, the manager decided to go through the security camera footage. Here are some of them, made in May, June, July, August, and September. Do you see anything suspicious? On each of these recordings, there's a man with a cast. If he really had his arm broken, it'd heal in a month or a couple of months max. But it's been five months, so the cast is obviously fake. And he's the thief. I think the cashier should file a wrongful termination suit, but I digress. Venus was expecting her delivery, but it was running late because of heavy rain. She had to go to work, so she asked her boyfriend, who had a day off, to get it from the post office for her. When Venus came back home, her boyfriend said that he had just been to the post office, but the package hadn't arrived yet. Venus understood that her boyfriend hadn't gone anywhere. How did she figure it out? It's been raining all day, but the spot under the car is dry, which means no one's used the vehicle during the day. Dr. Roberts, one of the best surgeons in the country, came to his insurance company and said that he had been robbed right in the street. The assistant asked if Dr. Roberts remembered any specific details about the robber. The surgeon said that he couldn't recollect anything because the robber had been fast. Plus, since Dr. Roberts had extremely poor eyesight, he hadn't seen him clearly. The assistant refused to proceed and said that Dr. Roberts was lying and hadn't been robbed. Why didn't he believe Dr. Roberts? <laughs> Dr. Roberts is a surgeon. Surgeons usually have excellent eyesight. So why did a highly paid surgeon need the insurance money? Hmm. There was a grand ball organized in honor of Ms. Dell's birthday, and half of the town was invited. Suddenly, the lights in the entire building went off for a couple of minutes. When the lights came back on, Ms. Dell's beautiful diamond earrings were missing. The main suspect was her distant cousin, Sylvia. But the girl said that she had been in the bathroom fixing her makeup. She didn't even notice that the lights had gone out because she'd been busy. Who is lying, Ms. Dell or Sylvia? The lights went out in the entire building. If Sylvia had been fixing her makeup, she would have definitely noticed that something was wrong. Hey, it's dark in here! In a parallel universe, it's only allowed to have fun and eat candies. No one ever reads or studies. Mrs. Relham came back home after a long day at the club. Her three daughters had been staying at home. The woman asked them what they had been doing. Hannah said she'd gone shopping for a new board game and then spent the day playing it with her friends. Elle said that she had been partying with her classmates in the pool. Ava said that she had been binge-watching TV shows all day and eating ice cream. Mrs. Relham could tell that one of her daughters lied. Who was it?
It was Hannah. Look, the board game she bought is unpacked. She couldn't be playing it. Four friends were driving to New York City for the weekend. The music in the car was on and everyone was in a good mood, so the driver got distracted and got in a car crash. A police officer arrived and started an investigation. He asked the guys who had been driving, but no one wanted to take the blame. Then the officer inspected the car. Can you tell who was driving? Look, there is a purse hanging on the driver's seat. It must belong to a girl. There's just one girl in the group, so she's likely to be the driver. Mrs. Miller came back home after work and asked what her daughters had been doing all day. They were all grounded and weren't allowed to leave the house or watch TV. Kaylee said that she had been doing housework and had just finished cooking pizza for dinner. Ellery said that she had been upstairs in her room reading. Lilith said that she'd spent the day cleaning her room. Who's lying? It's Kaylee. She said that she had made this pizza herself. But why is there a pizza box in the garbage? She ordered the pizza and was probably doing something else instead. It was a cold fall day. Mr. Jones was at home drinking tea and reading his newspaper. He also peeked out of the window from time to time. There, four teens, Mark, Davin, Bexley, and Penny were having a picnic. Suddenly, a ball broke the window of his living room. The teens started to pack their things. They didn't want to confess who had done this. In the evening, Mr. Jones got a note, but inside, there was just a question mark. Do you know who broke the window? The question mark is a hint. It literally means question mark. So Mark must be the one who did it. Adele found her friend Oliver on the floor of his studio in the attic. She called the police. The officer who came asked the girl to tell him what had happened. Adele said that she had been walking past Oliver's house and noticed that the lights had been on. She came up to the window, peeked inside, and saw him on the floor. She called the police and ran into the house. The police didn't believe her. Do you? No, it doesn't sound right. The guy was in the attic. Adele couldn't possibly see him through the window, unless she was 20 feet tall. Jack is in a cold cell. There's only bare ground under his feet. In the cell, there's one window, but it's impossible to escape through because it's located too high. There are no stairs and no chairs, just a shovel. Jack has no water and no food. He needs to get out of there in two days. But he can't dig a tunnel since the walls are too thick and go deep underground. Jack will get exhausted long before he digs his way to freedom. So how can he escape? He needs to dig a large hole in the ground and use the dirt to make a small hill. He can then climb it and reach the window. Marty walks around an IT university building. Three people are following him and discussing something. Marty enters the Hall of Holograms. People walk inside too. Marty sits down on a chair. As for the three people, they go on the stage, still talking. Some of them are holograms. But who? This guy has a flashing nail on his right index finger. This girl has two left hands. The girl in the middle is slightly transparent. They all seem to be holograms. But wait a minute. Take a look at Marty. He's sitting on a chair, but his body isn't touching the surface of the seat. He's not real either. It's early morning. Sam leaves the house and goes to the lake. The sun hasn't risen yet. The water is crystal clear. Frogs are croaking in the distance. Sam takes several photos of nature and one selfie. He posts the pictures and writes this caption. 
I've had a great run. There is nothing better than a morning workout, my dear followers. Have a great day. After that, the guy returns home and goes back to bed. He sleeps until lunch and then takes his phone and sees hundreds of comments. <laughs> I wish I had such a run. Dude, why do you deceive us like that? Here it is, a real day of the champion. Obviously, people have found out that Sam didn't run in the morning. But how? He wrote that he had just had a run, but his face isn't red and he isn't sweaty at all. There are four different countries on one distant continent. Each of these countries has its own emblem with one simple symbol. The same number of people live in each of the countries, nine ordinary citizens and one monster. One queen, one king, and one prince. Two jesters sometimes drop by these kingdoms. What is this continent? It's a deck of cards. It contains nine regular cards, ace, queen, king, jack, and joker. Once on a cold winter evening, someone broke into a bakery. When the baker came to the building in the morning, he noticed that the lock was broken. He called the police and reported a break-in. Then he went inside and realized that the thief hadn't stolen anything. At that moment, the police arrived. The baker told him that the place hadn't been robbed, but a police officer inspected the room and declared that someone had still broken the law. What happened there? There are almost imperceptible footprints leading to the pantry. The thief must have hidden there to wait for the baker to receive the day's earnings. Mickey has been wandering in a desert for several hours. He's tired, thirsty, hungry, and sleepy. He notices a big house standing on the hot sand. Mickey goes inside and sees a massive block of ice in the center. Someone must have put it there for a reason. Mickey licks the ice, but it doesn't quench his thirst. He decides to wait. It takes a couple of seconds for one drop of water to evaporate in the desert, so the ice should melt soon. The guy leaves the building and goes for a walk. Several hours later, he returns to the house, but nothing has changed. The ice hasn't melted. How is this possible? There are air conditioners on the ceiling. They keep the temperature in the room low and prevent the ice from melting. Florence, Anya, and Margot are walking along the beach, telling one another about the past week. All the girls look wealthy and successful, but several people are taking photos of them. It means that at least one of these girls is a celebrity. But who? It's Anya. Look! That guy is wearing a t-shirt with her face on it. Marcus is leaving a large shopping mall. He pulls his phone out of the pocket and accidentally drops it. Oh no, the screen is cracked. Marcus gets into a taxi and goes to a phone repair service. He sees dozens of shops. Each of them offers its own services. Battery replacement. The best service in the city. Let's fix your microphone. And dozens of others. Help Marcus choose where to go. Do you see a small store with the We Can Change the Screen Glass sign? This is what Marcus needs. Somewhere at sea, a huge ship is traveling. People on the deck are having fun, speaking, drinking cocktails, eating delicious food, enjoying beautiful seascapes. This is a passenger liner. It doesn't have any secret mission. The passengers are ordinary people with ordinary jobs. They discuss the weather, new theater plays, music, books, and travel destinations. They all seem to be intelligent and educated. The strange thing is that no one takes any photos and posts them on the internet. Okay, the internet may not be working so far from the shore, 
But why don't they take selfies? Who said this cruise was taking place nowadays? It happened before the era of smartphones and the internet. Two influential media moguls are having lunch at an expensive restaurant. They're discussing the merger of their companies. The transaction amount is several billion dollars. They're whispering since the terms of this deal are top secret, and they suspect that someone can hear them. And they're right. Some curious people are eavesdropping on the conversation between the two businessmen. Try to find them. The girl at the next table is reading a newspaper that is turned upside down. She's obvious trying to overhear what the billionaires are talking about. This guy over there is listening to music, but the headphone wire is not connected to anything. Another girl is sitting at the table in the corner with a cocktail. But instead of an umbrella, there's an antenna in her glass. She's recording the conversation. Where are my employees? A boss shouts. He's furious because three people haven't come to the office. He calls each of them to find out the reason. All three tell him they got ill. The boss doesn't believe them, so they have to arrive at the office. Mary is wearing a warm jacket, hat, and scarf. She sneezes, coughs, and looks sick. Lori is walking on crutches. Her leg is in a cast. Sometime later, Michael appears. He's got a hand injury, and now he can't type. The boss is sure that one of them is faking. Who is it? Mike's left arm is broken, but his phone is in his left pocket. He must have used his broken arm to put it there, which means he's pretending. Apparently, he just didn't want to come to work. Jerry's walking through the woods. He's cold, hungry, and lost. The guy takes a few steps and stops because he hears something. He goes toward the source of the sound and finds a large clearing. There are three houses. Which one should Jerry enter? The house on the left is closed from the outside. There's a lock on the door, see? The house on the right seems safe. But look at these footprints leading to the door. These are wolf paw prints. Jerry should choose the house in the middle. A wanderer has been walking through the desert for several hours. He doesn't have any water left, and he's losing strength. He climbs a low hill and sees three lakes. They're far from one another, and only one of them is real. Help the wanderer distinguish the reality from a mirage. There are palm trees near all the lakes, but only one of them reflects the trees. It means that the lake on the right is real. You're walking along the beach. Suddenly, you hear a scream. A woman is calling for help. She's drowning. You run into the water and swim towards her. As soon as you approach her, you see three more people. They're all screaming, but only one of them needs help. The rest are mer people who want to take you to their kingdom. How can you find out which one is human? Dive under the water to see who has a fish tail. Richard likes abandoned buildings and old castles. Today, he's going to check a huge house that belonged to a vampire a long time ago. Well, that's what the legends say. Richard certainly doesn't believe this. He takes his camera and sets off. It's dark and cold inside the house. Crackling sounds are coming from the corridor. Richard shines a flashlight and sees three vampires. Richard starts running away, but then he stops and returns. It seems these vampires are fake. How did the guy understand this? There's a mirror on the ceiling above the first vampire, and he gets reflected there. The second vampire has no fangs. And the third one, uh-oh, he seems to be real. Run! Now Richard wants to visit an abandoned hospital. There are rumors that werewolves live there. Richard is sure it's a myth. He's walking around dark hospital wards all night, 
but finds nothing. He's about to leave, but four men block the exit. They are howling and growling. Which of them is the real werewolf? No one. The full moon is shining through the windows, but these people haven't turned into monsters. But still, Richard runs away. It seems these guys are really crazy. A rich man comes to an exhibition of modern art. He's going to buy a new painting for his collection. The owner of the exhibition shows him three works of different artists. In the first picture, there's a green triangle with a sunflower in the middle. The second painting is of a tiger taking a selfie on his phone. In the third picture, there's a flying house. The collector is sure that one of the paintings is fake. Which one? Each canvas has the artist's signature and the date when it was created. The painting with the tiger is dated 1957. There were no mobile phones and selfies at that time. This picture is fake. Martin's nervous because today is his first DJ performance at an electronic music festival. He goes on the stage. The crowd is cheering. Martin puts on his headphones and turns on the first track. Music is playing, but people aren't dancing. Why? The music is only playing in the DJ's headphones. Martin hasn't connected the wire to the speaker, see? Toby has been wandering through the desert for several hours. The sun's burning his neck. There's nothing but hot sand around. He's run out of all the water he had. Toby gets weaker and weaker, and finally, he falls down. At this moment, he sees two tiny ponds. Toby only has enough strength to get to one of them. Which of these ponds is a mirage, and which is real? The left pond is real. See the clouds above it? It rained there, and the rainwater formed the pond. At the edge of the forest, quite far from the village, there was an old house. Its owner found his TV broken in the morning. Someone had smashed the screen. The owner called everyone who had been in the house that night. A cook, a cleaning lady, and a lawyer. Who broke my TV? The man asked. I was cooking dinner. I didn't touch anything, the cook said. I was cleaning the basement, the cleaning lady answered. I was upstairs. I spent the whole night studying the documents, the lawyer replied. One of them is lying. Who is it? The lawyer. He said he was upstairs, but it's a one-story house. He couldn't be studying the documents on the roof all night. Tom has lost his car keys. He's searched every corner in every room, but hasn't found them. The guy goes to the farthest room, looks at the floor, and realizes the keys are hanging on the chandelier. How does Tom know that? The floor is reflective. An elderly philosophy teacher began an exam. His students were sitting in their seats, listening to him. Here's a task for you. Prove that everything that happens around me is real, and I'm not sleeping. Whoever writes the most convincing proof will get the highest points. The students had been writing for several hours, but almost no one got a good grade, except for one girl. She wrote an essay consisting of several words. What did she put on paper? You can't read this if you're asleep. By the way, you can use this tip while sleeping. It's almost impossible to read anything in a dream. Therefore, to find out whether you're asleep or not, look at your phone and try to read something. There was an old haunted house in town. Local people were afraid to go there. But one day, three girls and two boys decided to check that place out and record whatever was happening there. They approached the scary building, but one guy, Rob, refused to come in. He said he would wait for his friends outside. The rest of the group went into the house. Rob was nervous. After waiting for them for a few minutes, he was ready to call someone for help. 
but all four girls and one boy returned at this moment. Rob realized there were g g g ghosts in the house and ran away from there. How did he know that? Three girls and one boy were in the house, but five people came out. One girl was a spirit. Rob saw her and ran away. Michael is walking along the sidewalk, holding his hands behind his back. A car appears from around the corner behind him. At this moment, Michael is walking near a big puddle. The driver accelerates. He's going to splash the water all over Michael. But at the last moment, he suddenly slows down and drives around the puddle. Why didn't he drench Michael? Michael was carrying a brick behind his back. The driver was afraid that Michael would throw it at his car, so he didn't drive over the puddle. Alexandra is walking around an old castle. There are lots of portraits of kings and queens on the walls. The corridor is lit by candles. Alexandra goes down to the first floor, where several people are dancing. The girl feels as if she has somehow traveled to the previous century. But wait a minute, this is all fake. How did the girl understand that? A hidden camera is installed in the corner of the hall. Also, that dancing girl has a smartwatch on her wrist. See? It's morning. Bob leaves his house and goes to the beach. The sun is peeking over the horizon. The sea is calm. There's no wind. Bob sits down on the sand, closes his eyes, and begins to meditate. Several people come up to Bob and sit down next to him to meditate too. Bob opens his eyes, sees them, and realizes that something's wrong with these people. But what? Look at Bob, and now, at how these people are sitting. They aren't touching the sand. Their bodies are half an inch above the ground. Okay, now let's check and see how many correct answers you got. Zero to three points. Eh, don't get upset. There's no need to try to find stuff everywhere. Sometimes you just need to trust your intuition. Four to seven points. More practice, more riddles, more logical tasks. And next time, you'll definitely get better results. 8 to 11 points. Oh, not bad. But sometimes you probably were inattentive. 12 to 15 points. Wow, nobody can fool you. You can always figure out the truth. You're great, but not the best of the best yet. 16 points. Whoa! You are the king of riddles. You always remain attentive to details. And also, you have awesome intuition. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.